Ferdinando Carulli lived in Paris for much of his career, where he was very popular as a guitar teacher. He published this study in A minor in 1825 as part of his Opus 241, which was a guitar method. Much of this piece is made up of arpeggios, where you'll be using bulgar, in C, medio, and annular played in succession. Work for a well-balanced sound in the arpeggios so that every detail is clear and rhythmic. Get used to the feel of each right hand finger touching the string a little in advance of when it actually sounds the string. For rhythmic consistency, practice with the metronome occasionally. Start at a slow tempo, slow enough so that with a little work you can play it accurately and easily from start to finish. Then increase the metronome speed a small amount, then a small amount more, until after a number of practice sessions, you're playing it confidently at the tempo you want. The bass line is especially important in this piece. Occasionally sing the letter names of the bass line while you play the piece. In this particular piece, that helps focus on the harmonic movement and the phrasing. It also creates a simplified model of the piece that can help in memorization. This piece is in ternary form, sometimes called ABA form. The first section is in A minor. It has two subsections, each repeated. I've outlined it in red on the page here and marked its beginning with an A, A as in ABA form. The second section is in C major. It also has two subsections that are repeated. I marked it in blue on the page and put a capital B at its beginning. At the end of the B section, there's a marking DC al fine. DC means da capo, or go back to the top, back to the beginning of the piece, and play until fine is marked, which is at the end of the A section. I played the final A section without repeats, as is often done. The print music I'm showing here is from an early edition. Many guitarists learn this piece from Frederick Node's method, solo guitar playing, and in that book, this piece is notated using eighth notes instead of sixteenths. So it has a different look, though it's the same piece. The keys of A minor and C major are used in this piece. You should know the scales and basic harmonic elements used. If you don't know it already, memorize the A harmonic minor scale in the guitar's first position. Occasionally say the scale step numbers as you play, or better yet, sing them. This builds a foundation for understanding intervals and harmony. Also say, or sing, the letter names. This reinforces details of your fingerboard knowledge, as well as general clarity of thought relating to pitches. Here's the full A minor arpeggio in the guitar's first position, the one chord. Regarding harmony, this piece is all about the one chord and the five chord. There are other harmonies too, but for now we'll just focus on the one and five chords. Here's the E major arpeggio, the five chord. Now the same approach in C major. 
everything you do to sensitize yourself to the fundamental elements of music, like scales and arpeggios, helps you understand music better and play more expressively. The one chord in the key of C gets so that you can say or sing the words root, third, and fifth as you play up and down the arpeggio. You'll know it in a deeper way when you can do that. Now the dominant arpeggio, the five chord, which in the key of C is a G major chord. The second section also uses the dominant seventh chord, so here's that. So as well as playing the piece, practice these scales and arpeggios. Once you know them well, you'll hear the piece very differently, and you'll be better prepared in both musicianship and fingerboard knowledge for other pieces that are in the key of A minor or C major. Even though this is a simple study, it has a lot of expressive potential and a lot of variety in how that can be done. In my performance here, I accentuated the dynamic aspect of the rising arpeggio to give a syncopated feel to the high note. I also played the bass line with a particular rhythmic articulation. I play this piece differently at different times. Personally, I always like this piece to have a consistent meter with a rallentando or a slight slowing at the final ending, and sometimes a bit of one at the ending of the B section, just before the return to the key of A minor. Lots of possibilities. If you understand the music and have the details of its sound clearly in your mind's ear, and you've trained your hands to do what you want at the level of technique that this piece needs, expressive ideas will come to you as you play and you should definitely try them out. Sometimes guitarists use the term arpeggio to mean plucking different strings one after another in a repeating pattern as a part of right-hand technique. Musically, though, the term means playing the pitches of a chord one at a time in succession, whether fingered on different strings or the same string. And that's the way I'm using the term here, talking about scale and arpeggio work. Listen to a good trumpet player practice arpeggios. If you don't know what a one chord or a five chord is, that's okay. Just practice these scales and arpeggios the way I've described, singing them while playing to get the sound in your ear. If it feels funny singing numbers, letter names, root, third, fifth, etc., just sing bum, 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 or any syllable you want. Doing that, you'll learn how the one and five chords sound in relation to each other, and that's the important part. After that, terminology is easy.